trituriate, a word my tongue likes to say, but my thumbs really hate. So trituration, you might say that word, basically that just means that you go up and down and up and down and up and down, typically through a syringe. Um, what this does is it's a form of homogenization. So a way to make things a uniform mixture, often we're using it to separate cells um, or to help us when we're breaking open cells, so lysing them. So what this does is it creates this shear force. So you have the like pressure pushing down and then it comes to this lid part and it's like and so you get this shear force where these um, forces are opposing each other and what this is going to do is it's going to separate things that are like stuck together such as cells if you have like tissues you want to separate the, them into individual cells or if you have individual cells that you're trying to lice open so you're trying to break them open another word for this is like cellular disruption um, and this is a form of mechanical disruption there's also chemical disruption and typically we often use them in combination so for example chemical disruption this is things like adding detergent so adding soaps to help you break open cells if you add a really really harsh soap then you can break open cells um, problem is that you then denature the stuff that's in the cells so we say unfold the proteins um, and mess up that sort of stuff so if you care about the proteins inside you're not going to want to use a strong detergent maybe we maybe you want to use a weaker detergent that maybe will help break up the membranes but it's not going to mess up your proteins but in this case, you need even more help to actually get those membranes open, and so you turn to some sort of mechanical disruption. This includes things like trituration, like um, there's things called like, there's like glass homogenizers, or like a down homogenizer, where basically you go up and down and up and down in this glass, and the, it pushes the liquid, you get shear force again, because you're pushing down and the liquid's going up against, squeezing in between the glass, um, the two glass pieces and you're getting shear force that way. There's also sonication. Um, you put your things in like a little sonicator bath and it sends out waves. Um, so these like ultrasonic waves, which then make these bubbles in the water that then crash and then like send out the shock waves to help break things open. There's also the traditional mortar and pestle, grind, grind, grind. Um, if you're doing this with like cells and stuff, whenever you're doing these things with cells, you typically want to keep them cold. So when we're doing the sonication, we often do it in like an ice bath. And when we're doing, if we were to grind things, um, we often do it like cryo milling or cryo grinding or whatever, where you actually do this all with like, you cool it off with liquid nitrogen and you freeze your samples in liquid nitrogen and then you grind, grind, grind. I remember we did that in like, um, in undergrad we did that with plants uh, because when you have plants in some sort of tissue in order to actually do stuff with what's inside the cells in there you have to actually like get those cells apart so if you think about a tissue you have a or some sort of like clump of cells on the outside the cells on the outside they may have contact with whatever liquid you're putting in them in but the cells on the inside well now they're not going to get contact with them so you need to kind of break things up first and so you need to homogenize your mixture so we can use this word homogenation homogenization um to mean different things and it doesn't have to be cells that you're talking about you could just have some sort of solution that you want to or mixture that you want to homogenize make things like evenly spread out throughout now when we talk about homogenizing cells we could be talking about just like taking the tissue and like splitting it up into individual cells um and so if you were to do things like single cell sequencing or single cell technologies where you actually break up tissues and you separate the individual cells and do stuff with them um, in that case, you would want to keep the cells intact. You wouldn't want to actually be breaking them open. This is still a form of homogenization. It can still, it's often done with like trituration, but in that case, you would be using like a wider bore needle. So if you look at like a pipette tip um, for like a micro pipette, you can see it's this nice like bevel, this nice line to kind of avoid shear stress so that everything is like a kind of a nice line. But if you look at like uh, syringe you see you have like this eh, eh. so like the force is then going to be and you have this bigger difference where you're jumping from this tiny needle to a big syringe so it's kind of like if you have a fire hose attached to a fire hydrant and then you squeeze the fire hose you're gonna be putting a lot of this like force and on whatever's in there so if you have like a bigger if you're pinching it less there's gonna be less of a strap and if you're pinching it more there's gonna be more and so depending on how much you pinch it, um, like the size of the needle, it can be um, various things as well as like how many strokes you have. And so for like a down homogenizer, there's like a loose one and a fine one in terms of the part that goes inside. So you can um, dictate the amount of stress that way. Sometimes you start with like a, um, start with like a looser thing and then go finer. Um, it all depends on what you're trying to do. 
So again, so if you want, you can homogenize things without actually breaking them open, but if you make too much force, then you're gonna break them open. This means you want to break them open. So it's this whole thing. Oh, another form of mechanical disruption is like bead disruptors. So you have those little beads that you put in there and then it has some sort of, if you use a vortexer or some sort of like special device that's probably just like a vortexer, but they charge you more. Um, and it kind of like moves the beads all around. It kind of bumps into things and splits things apart um, and helps mix them. Um, because mixing, that's that's our big idea. We'll also like blenders, like in the old school experiments um, where they just use like actual blenders, like worn blenders and stuff. Um, but anyway, so homogenization, that's when you're making this like even distribution of things. And then we have like lysis or cellular disruption, uh, which sounds a lot fancier. Um, but in this case, you're actually breaking the cells open. And this can be in combination with homogenization and you can be like homogenizing your lysate um, so these kind of play together. In terms of the ones that we normally use around the lab, these are like, the, you can think of them being like physical methods, um, biological methods, and chemical methods. And so the physical methods, that's like the trituration and the, homog the dous homogenization, um, things like the sonication, um, things where we're actually like generating or like either physically like into contact with it or through like waves with the sonication, um, some sort of manual type of force. Um, we can also do things like freeze thaw the cells a lot of time um, to generate, um, like stress them out that way. You can also help break cells open using osmotic stress. Um, so basically, Osmosis is where water will move from a place where there's not very much stuff to a place where there's a lot of stuff. You can think of it kind of like diluting it out, but that's not really how it happens. It's just because there's a lot of water molecules over here and not so many um, relative over in where there's a bunch of other stuff. And so the water molecules are randomly moving around and then they're going to end up, more of them are going to end up over um, where the stuff, there's a lot of stuff. But anyway, what happens is that as the water is moving, if you have like it's going through like a semi permeable membrane. Um, and so basically the water can go through the cell walls, but there's a bunch of stuff that's stuck inside the cell walls that can't come out. So if you add use like a hypotonic buffer. Um, so basically outside the cells, there's going to be a lot, a lot of water and inside the cells, there's going to be a lot, a lot of stuff. The water is going to go into the cells. This is going to cause the cells to like swell up and potentially burst. Um, and so you can use this to your advantage to help um, break cells open. And that's one thing that you can do. Then there are like the biological methods and the chemical methods. And so when it comes to these biological methods, here we're often talking about doing things like adding, um, like adding enzymes. So adding, say, things that will, like lysozyme or things like this that'll help break down cell walls, say. And then there are the chemical methods, which is when we're adding some sort of like detergent, we're adding some sort of chemical that is going to help us break open the cells. And often we're using some sort of combination of various types. So we might be doing freeze thaw in combination with the mild detergent, in combination with trituration. Um, so you can do these various things in order to break cells open. Speaking of breaking cells open, it's going to be harder to break some cells open than others. So for example, yeast and bacteria, because they have cell walls, they're going to be harder to break open than like mammalian cells. Um, our cells, we don't have cell walls, um, and so we don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, so for some types of cells, um, it, they're going to be more difficult, and then you might need to use harsher methods. Um, so for example, you might take a pellet of cells, um, and you want to break them open, but you want to do so in a way that's going to preserve the proteins and stuff, so you don't want to just add a really harsh detergent. If you're just doing like a western blot or something, you often can just add a really harsh detergent, because the western blot, those antibodies are typically recognizing like denatured protein so the unfolded form so if you unfold them when you do this no problem a lot of these recipes for this sort of lysis actually use SDS so use that detergent that we use when we're running the protein gels before we do our Western plot um, so harsh detergent totally cool there but if you want something milder um, there's also ones that if you want to like preserve the nuclei and stuff um, you can use a milder detergent and stuff but again, when you're using a milder detergent, or if you're not using a detergent, you're going to want to make sure that you also have some sort of mechanical disruption method. And even if you are using a harsh detergent, if you're starting with something that's all like tissuey and everything's stuck together, you're gonna need to homogenize it somehow so that the liquid can get into the parts of the inside. 
speaking of that liquid, we're not just like doing this in water. Um, typically our lysis buffer, in addition to possibly the detergent, it has things to make sure that we're not going to be like, nothing in the solution that comes out of those cells is going to be chewing up what's in the cells. So inside of the cells, there are like these things called lysosomes, which have these like proteases. So protein chewers so that your cells can like degrade proteins that they don't want and reuse the parts. You also have, if you didn't wash your cells and stuff, there's like proteases that are like outside the cells typically to protect them from foreign stuff. Bottom line is if you break the cells open, you break those lysosomes open, all of those proteases are going to be in contact with your stuff. So you need to add protease inhibitors. Um, so they make like different like protease inhibitor cocktails that can be used to inhibit different types of proteases. Um, sometimes these come as a little like tablet where you can do, um, don't try to dissolve the tablet as is, like crush it up first. What I like to do is take a tablet, stick it in one of those, um, like a whey boat paper, whey paper, like fold it up kind of grind it another good use for a mortar um, or pestle I can never remember which one's which um, but anyway yeah grind it up and it'll make it easier to dissolve similarly to how when we grind up cells it makes it easier for us to break themselves open um, and so yes yeah, so there's like the lysis buffer there's like a pH buffer so the cells that's similar to what the cells are used to um, sometimes there are like sucrose or things so that it's because when you're breaking these cells open the outside of the cells is going to be a lot more dilute and you don't want that to like mess things up so you can add like osmotic stabilizers and stuff often if you care about the dna or rna you might be adding some sort of like chiotropic salt um which like guanidium chloride or something which is going to denature the proteins and things but you don't care about that but this is going to help protect the dna or rna um, and make it in a form that you could use. Um, to also to protect those you might have um, edta or something like that in order to um, like inhibit nucleases, so RNA and DNA chewers, you might actually add nucleases. Um, if you're looking, going after that RNA or DNA, you might have like a, do like a proteinase step where you're actually adding like a protein, proteinase K or whatever, like a, just a generic protein chewer. If you're trying to break open like bacteria or yeast cells, some of the chemical lysis methods use like a specific um, enzyme, so a reaction speeder upper, um, which is actually going to help break down the cell walls. Um, without chewing up other stuff um so basically the recipe is going to depend on what you're trying to what you're trying to accomplish um and i found this really really great guide um that i will link you to it's a really really thorough um uh, invest like description of these various disruption methods um and things like that um and yeah so whatever you're doing I mean, you probably are wanting to be doing it on ice especially if you're wanting to keep what's inside the cells remember you can go harsher if you um don't care about denaturing stuff, um, just go brute force, um, go with those harsh detergents and stuff, um, it's a lot easier. Um, but if you do care about what all that fragile stuff inside, then you're gonna need to be more careful. Which we choose is also going to depend on the volume that you're using. So trituration is great when you're working with really tiny quality quantities, but not so great if you have a lot, a lot of stuff. When you're triturating, you want to make sure that you're not introducing bubbles. Um, and so when you go up and down, like don't go all the way up to the point where you're actually drawing in air. Just go till there's still liquid in the syringe. Um, the bubbles are gonna cause problems. And one of the problems that they can cause is that they're introducing a lot of oxygen. Um, so in the lysis buffer, you typically have a reducing agent, something like DTT. Um, this is going to keep it more like the environment that is inside of the cells, this reducing environment um, when you break the cells open. Um, if you're introducing a lot of oxida oxygen, this could cause like oxidative damage, um, and so you have those reducing agents in there.